so yeah if you could uh yeah give us some comments tell us tell us where you're from name and everything you got going on well everyone that's coming in uh welcome to the um first well it's the second one technically but it's our um our first of a series of free archery trainings that we're offering um, on behalf of uh, International Archery Institute. Um, my name is Frank McDonough. I'm a co-founder with uh, Richard Doc McCune, which he should be here shortly. I think he's probably just logging in. Um, um, he's texting me right now. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, so, and then welcome with my, my personal mentor coach and our director of everything education curriculum you you name it mr larry wise most of you are probably familiar with larry already um larry, Hi everybody you wanna, why don't you uh talk to them explain to them what we're doing with this series what we're doing with today's session and i'm going to mute myself and get a hold of, of uh doc and try okay to square away will do welcome everybody uh it's good to have so many on board probably 40 um, yeah, this is our effort to uh, create a forum for all of you to discuss issues. So uh, this is actually the third time that Frank has conducted one of these. Uh, last week, we uh, talked about how to run a practice session. So the topic we selected for this week is uh, proper holding position. And so we thought we'd get a discussion going uh, do, do our presentation uh, about what the biomechanics are of holding position for the compound and also for the recurve bare bone uh, so that you can uh, establish uh, a good idea about what your anatomy should look at, look like when you are holding the bow and why we create that position. So uh, that, that's what we hope to do. And uh, yeah, we're not having these sessions be very long, um, half hour, maybe 40 minutes, depending on, on questions. Uh, but we'll get, uh, get some interest going. Uh, we do have our International Archery Institute up and running. We're presenting courses. Uh, we've got some on the schedule here to start in March. Uh, our 101 form class starting in March uh, will be for basic form improvement. And we're accepting recurve and compound archers into the same class, hoping that uh, you know, we get some people that really want to know something about both styles of shooting, both form alignments. And uh, so that's why we're doing that. So we'll see how many we can get to, to sign up. So I see there's people from uh, all over. So we're really glad to have you on board. So I hope everybody's staying well also and getting through this pandemic. And uh, that, that's what spurred us on last March uh, to create this uh, International Archery Institute. And that's, that's the name we settled on. Uh, we wanted to use university, but that was not legally possible. Although we act like a university, uh, we're going to be offering courses by a host of instructors. Uh, that 101 for, uh, course that I mentioned starting in March, Linda Back and I will both be doing that. Uh, Linda is uh, extremely talented coach, a level five USA coach. And I've worked with her a lot on the National Junior Dream Team. So she knows a lot about both styles of shooting, coaches uh, athletes in both. And so we hope to get some more signees for that course, and get it going in March. What do you have, Frank? Um, and then just, I'll be uh, guest coaching and helping with the forum class upon my availability because Tuesday nights I coach in person at uh, my facility here in Orwardsburg, Pennsylvania, Grass Hollow Archery, but the bare bow side and, and Olympic recurve side, I can help with that for sure. Uh, well, I, and the compound, I can, but well, you know, Larry and Linda are, are um, taking this course. This is the, 
the first course we did, and I don't know if any of our shooters are on here, but you know, we had an amazing, amazing result of that four week course. And, you know, uh, who, what we've come up with this format that for all of you that are shooters, you get, you know, experienced coaches working with you on all of the nuances of your form. And I highly recommend you go to our Facebook page and look for that IAI Archery Form 101 event page and the sign up is there. And, you know, cause this, like what we're doing today is just, we're just touching on a little bit of what you need to be looking at from, from a shooting and a coaching perspective. So yeah. with that being said, doc is on his way. We'll get him squared away, Larry, but in the meantime, let's okay. uh, get started. And so should I go with the holding positions? Um, the diagram that diagram first. Yeah. Uh, I, and I want to, I want to preface this diagram. There was some dialogue um, in regards to that diagram um, actually on the announcement when I shared the page. And, um, you know, the, hold on one second, I'm going to pull that up right now. So, and this is going to be on our, um, so uh, also let me say this, our podcast we've announced as the Archery Coach Cast is what I named it, presented by International Archery Institute. These recordings, and I'm going to be putting all of them on YouTube as well. Um, that's available through Apple Podcasts and Anchor and Spotify and all that stuff. So these mini sessions, these mini free sessions that we're doing every two weeks right now, these will be available to you afterwards So as well. And then um, we're going to be recording um, very topic-specific podcasts and all kinds of stuff related to archery. Um, lots of coaching and, and archery for life stuff, you know, talking about some of the neurological side and the mental side and, and all those items. Um, so like this stuff is going to be available so that you guys as coaches and shooters can go back and reference them. Um, but anyways, just to preface this image, Larry and I were talking about this a little bit before we got started. Um, and, and Larry, do you want to explain what we talked about, how this is just, this is like a guideline. Right. Uh, I, I designed this, created this drawing to give people uh, a general idea of what their anatomy alignment should be when they're holding their bow. Uh, so this is a stick man drawing, top view. We're looking down on the archer. That's uh, the best I could do. I'm, I'm a mathematician and a professional archer. I'm not an artist. Okay, so the stick man is perfect, but people are not. So uh, the stick man drawing here gives you a general idea of the lineup we want to achieve to hold the bow. Uh, each person's anatomy, of course, fits into this model or fits around it, near it, uh, a little bit differently because we're all, we're all made just a little bit different. Uh, so uh, let's, let's look at the compound side and you see three drawings. And I'd like to point out several things about the drawings. Uh, what I see mostly with compound shooters is on the far left. They're holding arm and elbow is short of rotation. Their bow is a little bit short for them. That is short in draw length. And so it does not allow them to draw the bow back far enough so that they can rotate that elbow in line with the arrow. That's the position we're looking at, getting efficient in our holding by putting our holding arm in direct opposition to the force of the bow. That means in line with the arrow, not at some other angle. Uh, as you see in this short position. Uh, in the long position, if you look at it, now this archer showing is showing the elbow rotated a little bit far 
beyond the arrow line quite a bit and look where the hand is, the anchor. It's back a little far. Uh, some people, when their bow is a little long for them, the draw length is a little long for them, uh, will allow that elbow to drop down also below the arrow line when we look at them from a face view. Okay, so those two things are noticeable. We would like to be in the middle where we see proper alignment. And there, I want to point out three things. First, the holding arm, the holding forearm elbow is in line with the arrow. Second, the shoulder line. Shoulder line is rotated to be parallel to the arrow. But remember, before you raise your bow and even after you raise your bow, your shoulder line with the compound is pointed way left of the target for a right-handed shooter. So we want to, as we're drawing the bow, coil the shoulder line. So we're, we're coiling the shoulder line as we're drawing the bow. And we want to get that shoulder line parallel to the arrow for stability. This is a stronger position. So if we leave that shoulder line short of that parallel, then we have a lot of muscle to use in the bow shoulder. And the more muscle you use, the more fatigue is your enemy, and so on, so on. Uh, third thing, the bow arm is straight. So the bones are lined up. And that brings us to the point of biomechanics. We're trying to utilize our bone structure to do as much work as it possibly can and thereby minimize the muscle that we need. So if you minimize the muscle, you won't fatigue and you'll be able to repeat at a higher level, which of course in, in the first session of the three sessions that Frank has conducted here so far, this being the third, he pointed out that uh, the principle, the first principle of learning archery is that archery is a two-step sport. You know, step one, you learn to hit the mark. Step two, you repeat step one. So when you're selecting a target, any kind of a target, your main objective is to repeat the shot performance that you do in practice. You want to repeat that over and over again to get two, three, four, five, six arrows in the middle. It's called shooting a group. So uh, again, proper holding position. Bow arm is straight, shoulder line parallel to the arrow, and the holding arm, forearm and elbow are in line with the arrow from a top view. And so that's, that's the basic concept, uh, again. Different people, everybody has a little bit different anatomy. And so we're trying to get as near to this concept as we can with each individual archer. Um, on the right side, the far right picture is what we hope to get to with our recurve bow or bare bow. Frank, you're shooting bare bow. Correct. You want to take this? Yeah. So, you know, the, the national training system, when you learn or you go through the system um, and you learn um, the proper alignment and when to set the alignment, which is probably one of the, the, one of the few differences between compound and Olympic recurve is, is, is when, um, one second, I'm letting some more people into our chat or into our, uh, discussion here um is is that the bone on bone contact is even more crucial especially in bare bow i can't emphasize enough in the traditional and uh, bare bow archery world how crucial the alignment is now you know in in the in 
my level four class going through that with coach Lee and coach Kruger and, and, and coach Beck was a, was a guest in that as well. And a few others, you know, they emphasized how the alignment will show that the tip of the elbow ultimately through expansion ends up coming transfer to hold and then into expansion ends up coming just slightly behind the arrow. And I will quote that that is optimal that you, that's where you end up at some point in time as the activation of the clicker happens. The important thing to remember though, is that two millimeters, sorry, I'm not in front of the camera, that two millimeter movement um, with establishing the, the bow arm wrist through the draw arm shoulder, that straight line and what we call the archer's wedge. Um, and that angular movement that happens from the angular movement does not happen until after anchor actually happens. That's where that, that land to that they talk about. And I'm going to put my cursor here, this that you guys should be able to see on that land too. That movement is minor from here. It's not even that much that my cursor is moving. That's expansion is less than that. And people, people don't understand that they teach, you know, expansion, they talk about, about the movement of expansion and how important it is to get to this holding position. Well, you have to follow all of the steps prior to pulling the bow back in order to properly get into the holding position being, um, you know, elbow or at least the forearm outside of the forearm tip of the elbow in line with the arrow, just the same. And again, the importance of this straight line, or as Coach Lee refers to it as, and as it's referred to in our trainings, the barrel of the gun from here. It's definitely a, a name that I don't think I ever would have picked up on, but that's what they call it. The barrel of the gun from this wrist through the release arm shoulder, this, this alignment right here. No, and we're not talking about what the, where the barrel of the gun points before and after and where the arrow line points we're just talking holding position for this um that's probably a whole other topic of discussion and another mini session because we don't have a lot of time we're we're, we're keeping this to like a 30 35 minute thing um but these holding positions and i want to go back and I even reference the compound and, and the idea of the holding position for recurve and olympic recurve the most important thing that I have found as a bare bow shooter and as a bare bow coach is that that the target panic loves bad tension and hates good tension. Remember that people bad tension, good tension, the more bad tension you have in your system, you're opening the door for target panic to happen. Lord knows there are shooters that shoot well, that are maybe slightly different outside of what we consider, you know, NTS perfect, you know, but everybody's built differently. Everybody's got different bone lengths and densities and broader shoulders. Everybody's got their own thing to think to, or to expect people to be identical to this, I think is irresponsible. And we have to understand that there's going to be some differences. My, you know, the, the outside of my draw arm elbow might not be where my cursor is right now. It might be a little bit further back or it might be just inside. It depends on way my body shaped. But the things that I, I personally think are carryovers from this holding position is that as you are coming into holding position, you want as minimal amount of extra movement as possible. That means when you're coming into position with the compound that that head is not moving, and that you're saying between your shoulders and over your spine. Same for bare bow and Olympic recurve. I'm not, you can move your head like bare bow is probably the one that has the biggest amount of variables because I know plenty of top end bare bow shooters that move their head or they have a little bit different alignment. The reason that I think we get away with that in bare bow is because our poundage is typically on the lower end and we don't, we can sort of get away a little bit with having the ability to not, um, hold that 100% weight into our back. Whereas an Olympic recurve shooter shooting 70 meters is shooting 48, 50, 52 pounds on the fingers. And the importance of really making sure that that barrel of the gun is set, drawing to load, getting into that 90, 95% and getting into your anchor. 
that's where that that's where that nuance is and why we maybe get away with it a little bit more in barebo is it an end all be all in barebo i don't think it is i know plenty of people that shoot 540s 550s um even venture into 560s that maybe aren't perfect but they have a lot of other amazing re amazingly repeatable things going on in their shot process that allow that to happen so yeah. um but they had the, the, the uh, bow arm here uh, on the recurve drawing yeah remember this is stick man he's perfect right <laughs> right uh, so depending on how a person's elbow works some people have an elbow that hyperextends uh, women's arms when they let them hang straight down and palm forward, women's arms are not straight down vertical. The, the forearm extends outward from the body. And that's, that's because women's hips are wider than men's. And so the arm anatomy shows that. So uh, just that feature alone, uh, may put an individual in a position that doesn't look exactly like the drawing. Yeah. So again, uh, look, look at the person's anatomy and we say that up at the top there. Uh, you have to adapt the person's anatomy here. And notice also in the recurve archer, the shoulder line, it's coiled more than the compound. And you need that, as Frank said, to set that barrel of the gun, that straight line of bone. Yeah. That's all bone, and it's the same length every time you set it. It has to be the same length every time. There. Yeah, go ahead. Frank. You have to set it at the same time every shot in order for it to remain the same length. And that seems to be, that's a little bit of a, a misconception or a misunderstanding of setting the barrel of the gun, it has to be set during the setup position and finalized at the setup position. It, it does not change in length from here. So set up from this position, roughly, this is your setup position. That barrel of the gun should be set so that when you, from set up into the barrel of the gun, it's a linear movement with the hand, but it's angular with that land too. And that's yeah, where, yeah. you know, you see, you see coaches that start to teach this stuff where they they think that the angular movement is the hand coming out, and that's not what it is. It's here, straight back into your anchor if you're an Olympic recurve shooter. You're already, once you get into load and you've loaded your back before even coming into anchor, you know, I mean you're you're holding 95 plus percent of the bow weight already. Mm -hmm. You haven't even gotten into expansion yet. Um, Larry, can can I got a, a, a direct question and I want to answer it. And I think you kind of touched upon it just in regards to the statement, your holding position must allow for individual differences. Yeah. Curious on why a lot of, a lot of people, some coaches, um, most not are teaching getting your elbow inside the string line. And just curious if you can elaborate on that. That's something that we are taught. We were taught in the level four that optimally at, while expansion is happening, that's where that's where that elbow mm -hmm. is, just inside the arrow line. Um, but again, in reference to Daniel's question, the holding position is can end up being different from shooter to shooter. It's you right. can't cookie cutter set every shooter in the exact same position. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. Um, right, uh, and you know some have shoulder anatomy that allows them to. Uh, rotate that holding arm and elbow just a little bit beyond the arrow line, more than what is shown here in, in the recurve drawing. Uh, and, you know, if they can do that, great. Not everybody is going to be able to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's that, it's, it's coil. It's the coiling thing that seems to mess people up because they don't coil. Um, at the right amount of, or at the right time and when they coil they coil too late and then it's already too late it's kind of like and I see this in the trad community um, you know trad shooters have this this habit of like really leaning into their shot this way 
when you're when you when you're getting into your shot this way not only are you pushing extra facial pressure that you have to repeat every time into your shot but you're cutting off the alignment the alignment's not happening in totality it can't happen because you have to have your head where over your shoulders over your neck over your spine between your shoulders you know and you don't have to bend at the waist and do all this leaning in order to cant the bow i understand why traditional shooters can't the bow but you have to and just to you know for purposes of this discussion this proper for compound and recurve bare bow is what we're talking about here that's the goal is to get somewhere to near or as close to those positions as possible draw length biomechanics the way when you're setting your bow arm when you're setting the barrel of the gun and not moving your head are all super super key components to achieving that so uh, two major differences here then between the two shooting styles uh, on the recurve side you're going to set that barrel of the gun coil that shoulder line, in other words, before you raise the bow and it better be finished by setup. That's pretty early in, in the steps. On the compound side, when we raise the bow, our hands are only a foot apart still. And so the shoulder line's pointing way left of the target for yeah. a right-handed shooter, as oh. I mentioned before. So. My cursor would put drawing, it right out here. When you're drawing mm -hmm. is when you're doing the coiling and your shoulder line is not set until you've hit anchor. So when this, this bone line setup gets finished is different in the two styles. Yep. Um, and then, I, I want to touch upon how the holding position and the, you know, the differences between the shots. Um, you know, what I have found and what I teach in as a, as a bare bow shooter, a competitor and a coach, you know, and, and the difference between recurve, I love Brady Ellison's explanation in the shoot like me video um, explaining what expansion is in order to have proper expansion, you need to have a proper holding position. Um, I started touching upon it a little bit earlier and sort of got sidetracked, I think, with messages and, and, and I want to go back and kind of rehash that real quick. We're already 30 minutes into this thing, Larry. I feel like we could go for... <laughs> yeah, well, I know what the next session is going to be. It's going yes. to be on the actual dynamics of, of uh, using a back tension release aid. <laughs> yeah, well, and the expansion of Olympic recurve and, right. and what the difference is with expansion with bear. You know, I think I'm going to hold my thought and, and throw it out there as a teaser because, because if you guys think that, that bear bow and Olympic recurve are identical, I'm going to, I'm going to push back mm -hmm. a little bit and say it's not um, nope. brought, because it's, it's a different shot. Um, a lot of the same movements, the movements aren't identical. And, and like I said, I'm going to throw out there that, that I think the idea of expansion is taught too much as a, as a movement, it's a movement, it's a movement. And Brady's explanation, um, is amazing. And I'm going to encourage you guys to go look at that clip and we'll probably look at it in two weeks. If we decided to do this in two weeks, we could do it every week. Probably, we'd probably have enough time. <laughs> it um, end up being every week. They could end up uh, every week. You just have to watch our Facebook page. And he says where expansion isn't. Um, he's not moving. He's not pulling. He's not pushing. He's maintaining the tension and direction of of the shot. But as expansion, what's happening is because it's such a small amount of movement and the ratio of movement from his back because of leverage from his back to where the clicker is, just the buildup of the tension under the shot from him at that point about holding his breath and just the pressure, the blood pressure in his body, he automatically expands at his chest. And that's like a, like, like the first time I heard him explain it that way, I was like, that is absolutely perfect because in bare bow, we're too often, um, even in compound, you know, you get people to start ripping through their release. They're ripping through it, thinking that I have to have this big drastic movement. 
and you don't once expansion happens once release happens that's when you 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 maintain that tension and direction but then you relax and you know it can't that's the importance of like larry and i are going to talk about next week you know that's when we're starting to get into that conscious to subconscious switch that's when we're getting into that what 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 your coined terms larry your mind manage to body okay. feel switch yeah we're gonna start talking about that right yeah that's the focus shifting uh those are the terms that i use uh when we get into the mental game so mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and key components to dealing with target panic for you barebow shooters out there and um you know it's those are key components to dealing with target panic is understanding these positions, how to get to them, um, and how to allow those focus shift, that focus shifting to happen. So I don't know if we'll ever dive into it in totality. That's why you take our, our archery form course. <laughs> we can't give it all away, Frank. We can't give it all away. Well, I mean, we don't have the time. We, we don't have the time, but you yeah. have that. And remember for, for all of you who have the form class, we have the mental, uh, our, our, uh, mental skills. Mental, yep, mental skills class. And then we have the the complete systems, the 103 level, yeah. class, the tournament preparation, you know, programming. We we put all that stuff in. So you, it's a three level. It's basically three classes that you can take. They're live. They're with us, with other coaches. Um, you know, as, uh, that includes we're expanding outside of just you know regular archery and getting into adaptive archery with mj rogers and um i larry i did message with george that did you talk to george Rod? no i didn't get to talk to george did he send you a message uh we did we chatted a little bit he said that he's george riles yeah yeah Good. um you know and try to bring bring some of these experts in the fields but allow you to work with them one-on-one -on -one in a live class over multiple weeks so again, all of you that are on here, um, you know, thank you for joining. If you guys have any questions that we can try to elaborate on, and if I missed a question, I'm just seeing um, my comment as the last comment at 1223. If anybody has any questions or something, we'll give you like five or 10 minutes yet that we can maybe address some things. Yep. Um, go ahead and comment on them. Otherwise, you know, that's kind of, I think what we wanted to cover. Um, I, I know Doc wanted to, maybe talk about a few things as well uh, i don't know if doc doc was listening i don't know if he's still if he's on a phone call with, for work or he can jump in mike the co one of our co-founders doc McCune. you saw him for a brief second he was at the bottom of the the screen there um actually you know what doc if you yeah i have to turn your um doc i turned your settings back on so you can turn your camera back on um but yeah if you guys have any other questions or would like to um submit those or put them in the comment there's doc he's learning zoom everyone he's doing a really good job though yep we're bringing them along there i am there you are hey great session can you hear me yeah you're good oh, okay it was a great session, and uh, we'll be uh, doing a lot more with this. Uh, just one quick comment. All of these diagrams, that are what, what they're really showing us uh, beyond the, the, the proper position to put yourself in, is uh, when we're shooting a bow, we're participating in the entirety of the natural system. And I've researched this, and I've also researched all the neurology back uh, interface with that. So along the way, we'll talk about those different things because it really gives us, uh, I think, a, a sense of uh, satisfaction to know that we're not fully in charge of our shot. We're a participant. We are the activator, and that's a very responsible position. But if we don't activate things the way uh, Frank and, and Larry are, are introducing it here and have been taught, that then 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 we're out of out of sync with the natural system which allows the shot to happen and 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 not only that then later we can see the the neurological interface with that which actually activates the 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 bodily and inner in the biochemical 
forces that actually keep us healthy. And the, and I I've worked on that now for a little over ten years of research and and, and meta analysis of the top research in the world. Uh, I've I've taught in that area for almost forty years. I'm no longer teaching, but now I can apply these things to what we're doing here as archers. So I look forward to working with all of you. Yeah, there's a question there, Frank, from uh, Christopher. Yeah, so Chris's question is uh, for recurve, the release should, I don't know if it's a question or a statement, should happen while passing very slowly the arrow line um, with the drawing elbow. Now, Chris, I'm going to say that because of the ratio of movement, that's, I think that's, that's, that's sort of the misconception. The, you're not going, expansion is not a visible movement. You're not going to see it. It's not one of those things where you actively see the move. The goal is for when you, let me grab my handy dandy. I got these things everywhere. Let me tell you. When you, when you come back, you load, you come into anchor, transfer to hold. Once I transfer to hold, I, I'm there. It's where it needs to be. And I should be within that two millimeters of the clicker. Like I was explaining in regards to like Brady's video. And I highly encourage you. I think it's on World Archery's YouTube page. I highly recommend you um, Google that and watch his video explaining expansion and, and how his release happens. The, the release happening is that focus shifting. It's when you go into that subconscious state you know, and allow the string to pull through your fingers. So essentially what it's going to look like is load, anchor, transfer, hold, and the expansion is and, and that's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's like, um, it's, it's, how do I explain it? Well, pressure welling up inside of you is what's the, yes. Yeah. That's and, what outside the movement may not be visible yep. you might see some movement in some people yeah and where that occurs whether that occurs directly in line with the arrow or uh rotated just a little bit further around uh i i know brady gets a little bit further around mm -hmm. uh, again his body is able to do that he functions well there but yep. It's, it's a micro movement and you may or may not see it. If you watch me shoot the back tension release aid when I have time to practice, okay? <laughs> you won't see movement of my elbow or arm. But when the release goes off, then my arm comes around and follow through, meaning those forces were there and they were well established and that that angle is changing just enough to set off the release aid, but not enough that you're going to see it. Hope that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs>